Good morning. This is Anthony Stein from Return to Tradition. If you are, haven't watched me in a few days and wondering why I'm in a very different kind of environment, the brief explanation before we get into today's news is that I live in Shawnee, Oklahoma, which was just hit by an EF3 tornado, and the power is, at the time that I'm recording this video, out at my house. And as such, uh, I am staying with family in a nearby city so that my children can have things like hot food and hot water and general security that might not be available in the aftermath of a tornado. I have an explanation video about all that this past Sunday. Anyway, on today's news, hence also why I don't have any of my like, trailer at the beginning and all that stuff, just don't, didn't have the ability to grab the things I need to make that. Anyway, on to the news item of the day, which is that we have word coming from sources close to the Society of St. Pius X that they are getting ready to consecrate new bishops. My sources close to the SSPX are telling me this, as well as our sources now close to others in the reporting game. And there are two versions of this story, so I'm going to tell you both of them. And unfortunately, I won't be able to post sources to this stuff because these are more confidential sources than anything else. But also, these are sources that are... I also just don't have access to that website right now because I'm traveling. Um, such as what happens when an emergency hits you. But there are two versions of the story. And the first one is that Francis is reviewing a list of candidates from the Society of St. Pius X. These are priests of the SSPX that he will personally approve of one for consecration as a bishop. This will be the new first new bishop since the SSPX in infamous consecrations by Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre that were illicit but canonically legal. They were. I mean, you look at any of the real serious examination of it, the excommunications that happened as a consequence were considered illicit, which is why they were all lifted. And the first law of the church demands that if that salvation of souls demands that such things be done, especially if you know what the church was like in the 1970s and 1980s. I think more people are waking up to that reality now. But as the story goes, Francis is looking at one bishop for the SSPX. On the one hand, this would put an end to all claims that the SSPX are in some state of schism when they've never been in schism. And if they are in schism with anything, what are they in schism from? Heretical modernist Rome? Please, I'm in schism from that too, and as are most of you who watch this, even if you don't want to admit it. But that would put an end to the talk that they are have no status in the church. I would put an end to most of that talk. They'd still be in kind of a legal limbo somewhere that canon lawyers would need to work out with them. But finally, most of the pope splainers who want to tell you why Pacamama was really Our Lady of the Alpacas or whatever, or the people who want to tell you that, no, it's okay, really, that Francis has this nasty history of clearing the names of evil men who are priests who like to engage in Ted McCarrick-type activities, usually with, sometimes with unwilling nuns, that it's okay that he clears them. Those Pope's planners are going to have a problem when that happens. We don't know who the candidate is. There's going to be, if it's one bishop, there's going to be a list of, or one priest, there's going to be a list of these young men given to Francis by uh, the superior general of the SSPX, uh, Father Pagliariani. And I know I'm saying his name wrong. I have found many different pronunciations of his name online. And I know many of you are going to tell me what they are, how to do it, say it really, and they'll probably all be different from each other. I have heard him speak once, and unfortunately I don't have the ability to queue up a video of him right now. So my apologies for mispronouncing his name. But the names were given from him to Francis, as the story goes. There's the second version of the story, though. And the second version of the story is that the Society of St. Pius X has been, the Superior General has informed his priests to prepare their laity for Episcopal consecrations. Note the plural there, consecrations, meaning multiple. Why do you need to prepare the laity for that? Because it means that they have, they're deciding to go it alone to do it again the way it happened in 1988 and to incur what Rome will, I'm sure, call automatic excommunication, which is fine. I, 
maybe it's a bad, it's a badge of honor to be excommunicated by apostate Rome these days. It really is. Again, Pacamama adores. I mean, who cares? These are people who are wanting a who allow heretics to heretics and actual schismatics to offer their version of the mass that is at best illicit and questionable at the altars of church like St. John Lateran and other places. And then there's another one scheduled for an Orthodox priest or bishop here in the coming, like next month. That's happening. That should cause a lot of faithful to get very angry. But of course it won't because most Catholics in the modern world have been, tra have been trained to see the SSPX as the most evil thing and these actual schismatic groups is fine. It's bizarre. And every time I see someone saying that stuff, it's like I'm looking into an alternative reality. But it looks like the SSPX may be willing to go and do it without the approval of Rome. Think about the implications of that. Take all the time you need. When that story breaks, if that version happens, it's going to cause things to go just ballistic on you know, the conservative neocon side of Catholic YouTube. You're going to see all the usual SSPX bad groups. I saw a very high-profile person that whose work on purity and sanctity I respect greatly. When he opens his mouth about the about the SSPX, I, I cringe because he says things that are just flat-out untrue. You're going to see that side of things just go nuts. There's Kennedy Hall is on YouTube. He spends a lot of time doing um, the defenses of the SSPX and debunking these positions that people have, and he comes at it from a very different angle than most people do. Most people will just tell you the way I do that, if you saw the things going on in the 1970s and the 1980s, if you knew about the dialogue between Rome and Marcel Lefebvre, you would know that the that Archbishop Lefebvre had the legal right to do it because in a state of emergency, he has the right to consecrate bishops without Rome, regardless of what canon law might say. And now all the only the entire argument then hinges on the question of do you, do, did Archbishop Lefebvre honestly believe that the church was in a state of emergency? And the answer to that question is an obvious yes. You could watch his homilies or read his homilies, read the things he wrote. He honestly believed it. And it's hard not to think that the church was in a state of emergency then, and clearly the church is in a state of emergency now. That's it. But Kennedy Hall takes a different angle on it. He's done defenses on his YouTube channel, and he has a book coming out soon called SSPX, A Defense. People are kind of making fun of it because he's from Canada and spells defense the way everyone outside the United States spells it, with a C at the end instead of an S. But that's the book he's got coming out, which he will, if you're curious to hear about the argument, go ahead and read it. I'm going to try to get him on to have a conversation on a live stream or something for this channel. And it might be one of those where we do 10 minutes here and then the rest on Rumble, just so that we can have our hands completely free to speak freely about such things. But that's what's happening. It really does look like, after years, that the SSPX are going to go forward and do this. And my only question is, I understand why they would want Francis to do it for them. There's a lot of reasons why they want that to happen. They say his name at their masses, so they believe he is the Pope. So obviously, if the Pope, the person you believe is Pope is offering to do this for you, obviously you would want to have it done. I'm hoping that if they're going to do this alone, not that I'm hoping that they do it alone, but if they do decide to go, that they don't just consecrate four priests. The Society of St. Pius X has something like 700 priests, counting their retired priests. They, the only, thing that out, only group that outnumbers them right now are the Jesuits. That's to my knowledge. I might be wrong about that. Let me know if there's a group. They have like something around 500 active priests. The SSPX do. Let me know if there's another group in the church that has more than 500 active priests, aside from the Jesuits. Um, but if that happens, let me know, because my hope is they have hundreds of the hundreds of priests, hundreds of men available for this, and that would leave them with the ability to have f at least four, I don't think that's enough, preferably six bishops, more than that if possible. Demand for the SSPX is growing and growing and growing in the aftermath of Traditionis Custodis, the responses ad dubia, and that phantom document that rumors say are st is actually still coming, that it got delayed because of Francis's trip to the hospital. And perhaps a new strategy for it, and it's supposed to come in the spring, which we are now in the middle of. I know because I'm sitting in a room in a hotel in Tulsa because my town got hit by the classic outbreak of spring weather here in Oklahoma, the classic tornado. So, I'm curious what you think about this, and 
please have a respectful conversation in the comments with each other. People are all over the place on this. You know, would it make you uncomfortable? The, there are three essential positions on the SSPX. Mine is I am pro SSPX, but I actually go to mass with the FSSP more than anything else. My attitude about the SSPX is I completely understand why Archbishop Lefebvre did what he did. It's it Was it necessary? Yes, it was probably necessary. And I'm one of those who does tend to think he will probably be raised to the altars and made a saint someday. He wouldn't be the first person excommunicated who was made a saint later. That's the first position. Basically, some variation of that is usually the first position. The second position is absolute hostility to the SSPX, which then turns almost devolves into Democrats versus Republicans, right? And the third is more like actually my position, which is um, there's a variation of it. Uh, mine is I'm not uncomfortable with them. I've been to mass with the SSPX before. There are, but the third position is either comfort with or uncomfortable with, but generally accepting. I'm comfortable with them. I completely understand why the FSSP exists, why their priests took the decision they made in 1988 to reconcile completely with Rome. I don't hold that against them. I wish the anti-SSPX rhetoric from the FSSP would stop. I think that's extremely harmful these days. Souls are on the line, and there are plenty of Catholics who made the decision that because every parish within like 40 miles of their house with some level of heresy was being preached every Sunday, and noticing that the parishioners that were getting older and older on average, and people's children got confirmation and then left. They finally decided for the good of their family, they would take them to a traditional mass. And for some of them, the only option was the SSPX. I'm blessed to have the FSSP as an option, but I've also been to mass with the SSPX because I don't think this is a problem for the lady. This is a problem for the bishops and the priests to work out. And we shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves while this is going on. I think that's extremely counterproductive. But let me know. Do you think the they should just keep waiting? The FS the SSPX only have two bishops right now that are act in active service. They had four. One I think retired for medical reasons. The other is Bishop Williamson, who is a who have I I've had conversations with actually. Brilliant mind and very co colorful character to put it mildly. And he got in, he got in trouble because he won't change his opinions on things to, to, regardless of how PC it is at the time. But he got in some serious trouble and is no longer strictly speaking, associated with the SSPX, leaving two bishops for the SSPX, not counting the retired bishop who live the retired bishops, I think there's two of them, who live with Rome's approval at SSP, as SSPX facilities. Do you, think they sh do you think they should go forward with it? Do you think they should go forward with it with Francis's permission for that one bishop they're promised, or should they go it alone if necessary and get six? Or... Do you just think the SSPX are evil and of Satan, and that Francis is a luminous pope, and that Ted McCarrick is a suffering saint, and all the rest of that silliness that I hear from people? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. It helps a lot, too. So let's pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein on the road because of a tornado. Please pray for the people of Shawnee, Oklahoma, if you can. Ave Maria.